Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. Here's your pastor and host, Dr. Frida Cruz. Welcome to Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and for the second week, I am being joined by author, conference speaker, and former host of the syndicated television program, Freedom Today, Robin Bertram, as we conclude our discussion related to her book titled, Hidden Treasures, subtitled, Finding Hope at the End of Life's Journey, based on experiences derived from 25 years of prayer ministry, Robin provides insight and guidance to equip the reader, patient, family member, or friend to be able to walk through the end of life's journey with foresight, looking for and expecting to see God at work in many, even sometimes, miraculous ways, relying heavily upon the Word of God and her own personal experience, Robin wants readers to know hope that is available, that death with dignity is possible, and there are many hidden treasures to embrace along the way, as long as you're willing to look for them. Stay with us. And Robin, I'm going to say again, it's great having you back on Time for Hope. <laughs> Thank you. It's such an honor, Dr. Frieda. And it is a privilege uh, to get to share your book with my viewers. And uh, I am going to say again, there was so, there's so much in it that we can't possibly uh, get it out. And I'm encouraging all of you uh, to if you haven't already gotten a copy of Robin's book, uh, that you uh, make sure you do get a copy of Robin's book if you're experiencing s some of the things that we have named that she takes up uh, in her book. And these treasures, these hidden treasures, I, I would like you to uh, get the book even just to find out what treasures you might have you haven't recognized and get to enjoy them before the end of life's journey. So uh, there's lots of ways to look look at it uh, when we're talking about your book because it takes up now and uh, the end. You know what it has done from what it has done for me. It brought back memories um, of my dad. Uh, now I lost my mom later, uh, but he died at a fairly uh, early age. And I was a daddy's girl, okay? He had more than one, but <laughs> I was the oldest. Back when I was coming along, that was always special to be the oldest. And we were always close, uh, working together and uh, talking together and that kind of thing. So I ended up being the main one uh, that he shared with at the end of his journey as he was nearing the end of his journey and me. And it brought back memories of my sitting by his bedside uh, and listening uh, and him asking me the questions uh, that he wanted to know, have answers to and uh, so on and so forth. And so, uh, and it, it turned out to be a very good experience. Uh, just just a really good experience. You say, in dying? Yes. I even when he was in his final, he was in the hospital in his final hour, days and hours, and in his final hours, I lay by him on his bed, Sweet. talking to him, and I would I would ask him if he were cold or hot, and he could say uh huh or uh huh, and things like that. He couldn't talk uh, anymore, but he had given me some final instructions that he had not written down. And um, so uh, I remember the day that the doctor, uh, his doctor walked in and we were all there to hear what he had to say about daddy's situation. And he, the doctor um, said, I can hook him up to uh, some equipment that could probably give him another uh, three months. And um, so I said, no. I said, no, my dad told me to make sure that I didn't ever allow that to happen, that he did not want to be hooked up and left just on life support just to be here. And uh, so um, that, of course, that 
that flu at the doctor, so to speak, and my mother was sitting down uh, by my dad. I was standing up at the time, and he said, uh, "Miss Green, what uh, what do you think about this?" And she said, "Whatever." he wanted, and he had not even apparently discussed it with her, and uh, but they went with it. And so uh, I w we got to be with him. Uh, it was not too many hours after that uh, that he was gone. And Dr. Frieda, that, uh, that's the hidden treasure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Those moments that we get to uh, interact and and remember and, and talk to our loved ones. Um, I had talked to a, a, a woman in her late 30s and she said she read the book and so did her teenage daughter. And she said they sat on the beach and had the most intimate, powerful conversation they had ever had because they, they talked about these things. They talked about life mm -hmm. and they talked about death. Mm -hmm. And it's such a vital, important conversation. And I hope one of the goals of the book is to stir that conversation, mm -hmm. um, to help people have a time of just discussing how they want things to be, um, and memories, mm -hmm. sharing one another's memories mm -hmm. with each other. That's something you don't normally do, mm -hmm. but when you do, what treasures, what beautiful treasures you get to share. Yeah, you know, my husband and I, uh, God gave us uh, the insight and wisdom to get all of this legally taken care of, and so when it when it when he was in his last days, uh, it made things easier uh, because of. Uh, and I gave a copy to the children so that they would know I wasn't uh, you know Beautiful. keeping anything from them, a copy to them that they could know their dad's wishes and so on and so forth at the end also, but. But one of the things, and you might not agree with me on this, but I, of course, believe strongly in angels yes. uh, and in guardian <laughs> angels also. Every day I ask God to keep his angels close to take care of me, so to speak. And um, so there are people that have given accounts uh, be just uh, before they die of having angels in their room and their families not knowing what they're talking about because they can't see them. But those that are dying can see the angels gathering. And with my husband, my children were over. They'd been there for days and nights and they were over talking. And uh, they sometimes get funny when they get <laughs> distressed. And I understand that. that. And uh, so he started looking up, which he had not been doing, and grunting which he had not been doing. And uh, they said, Mom, he's trying to join us. He's trying to join in what we're talking about. And I said, uh-uh. He sees those angels gathering. He's, I knew it. I yes, knew he could yes. see those angels gathering for him. And he was trying to get us to see what he was seeing, which we couldn't. But he, he died very peacefully. Dr. Frieda, I had um, 30 years ago worked with a child that was 11 years old that faced cancer. And we stayed with that child for, I, I worked with the family about three years. And on his deathbed, um, the Lord was so gracious to allow us to surround him in prayer and his, with his parents. And um, the most beautiful thing happened when the child went on to be with Jesus because he knew Jesus. The Spirit of God entered that room. And even today, I don't think I've had a more powerful time. I could feel the presence of the Lord just envelop the entire room with his love. Yes. And I, I believe that's that's in this book because I want to encourage people. God is with us. He's with us in life. He's with us in death. He's with us through the trials, the tribulations, and the hardships. In the book, I write about God sees, God hears, God knows and God cares, mm -hmm. and He really does. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you when you um, when you really understand His love, uh, you can face those dark days. Mm -hmm. I remember the child would go around the room and he would say, "I love you, Miss Robin. I love you, Miss Lucy. I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad." And he would end every night saying this. 
I love you, Jesus. Oh, how fresh. Is so that not sweet. beautiful? Yes, and Dr. Frieda, today we have um, 26 million people this year will hear the news they have heart, can uh, d heart disease and 21 million will, will hear the word they have cancer. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs hope. Yes. They might not be at the end of their life, but they need hope in the midst of their journey. Yes, yes. And that's the, the importance of hidden treasures. I really want people to understand that um, when we're going through these things, God is working behind the scenes. And if we could only understand and see those beautiful blessings that he leaves all along the way, that gives us hope to understand he's in this with us. He's in it. He's in it. Yeah. <laughs> it but the the word, and you've got it in your book, surrender comes yes. to me. Uh, we must surrender to God's will at any time in our life, on any day uh, of our life, whatever it is, we are to surrender. And I think of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, in that garden. He didn't want to go to that cross. He did not want to go to that cross, and he was facing it, and he knew it was going to be horrible, and he was praying his disciples asleep. Can you imagine? Yes. And uh, then, uh, but he he asked God to take it away and not 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 make him go that route. And then, but he said, however your will, whatever your will is, that's what I will do and want to do. Isn't that a powerful lesson it's for us? powerful yes. for us. <laughs> because no one, I, I, you know, I don't want to suffer. I know when I went through my own health challenge a couple of years ago, <laughs> I, I was given four diagnoses from Mayo Clinic. They took three off the table. They left one with a very painful, short life expectancy of two years. And I remember the first month after receiving that information, I was so, the days were so dark. It was so scary and painful because I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't want to leave my, my children. And, and I remember putting my face in the carpet and crying out to God. And Dr. Frieda, as I'm speaking to you, he spoke to my heart and he said, Robin, are you going to believe what you've taught the last 30 years. <laughs> and I, I really had to just shake off the depression, shake off the fear, the anxiety, and say, yes, Lord, your word is true. You're sovereign and you know what's best when I don't understand. Yes, I appreciate you sharing this, but we're taking time from the next and last segment, but we'll, we'll pick up and let you finish out, okay? Yes. And we will be right back. What are you to do when grief breaks your heart? Admit your heart is broken and accommodate it by grieving. Perhaps you are thinking, what is Dr. Frieda saying? Because that is not what I have been taught. To many, it will come as a shock that I, a Christian counselor, would encourage you to give in to your emotions of grief when a loved one is terminally ill or has already died. This is true because many Christian leaders and pastoral counselors teach that Christians are to be strong and rejoice that their loved one either will be going or is already in heaven, and to allow our emotions to have their way with us is wrong. I have counseled people who have taught and given such advice, and then when they experience loss, they find themselves in a bind because others place the same burden on them that they have put on others. These misguided souls are caught in the web of knowing what they feel and believing something is wrong with them for feeling the grief they do. Grief is a natural and normal response to the loss of someone we are fervently attached to. It just so happens God made us this way, and to pretend otherwise can only complicate the physical, emotional, and spiritual problems, which are often the result of significant loss. 
Grief and bereavement compromise the immune system, leaving survivors vulnerable to sickness and disease. Studies have documented a record number of sudden deaths among men from coronary heart problems following the loss of a child. Others become spiritually confused asking why and are wondering where God was when death snatched their cherished one from them. So, when it comes our turn to grieve, even our own approaching death, and it will come, what can we do to remain healthy and spiritually strong through the process? Accept the reality that death will take someone from all of us sooner or later. When it does happen, own the pain of loss by allowing yourself to feel what you feel and tell yourself it's okay. And research has revealed that surrounding ourselves with people who are supportive while we grieve promotes better health. And finally, do what my mother used to sing about, tell it to Jesus. And I add, he will weep with you. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Robin Bertram, and we're talking about her book. She and I are sharing deep things uh, titled Hidden Treasures. And Robin, I want you to finish uh, what you. you were telling me about your uh, near-death experience. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. And I, I, really, I really faced the potential of only living two years. And thoughts went through my head like, who's going to put up the Christmas tree? Who's going to cook the Thanksgiving turkey? And all of those things go through your thoughts. And um, I really just had to get to the point where I said, God, it's your will. And that's a very scary and hard thing to say, Dr. Mm -hmm. Frida. But I looked back at my life and I looked at how faithful God has been at every turn. Even when I couldn't see him, he was working behind the scenes on my behalf. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to look at your life's journey mm -hmm. and you start to process all the blessings he's given you, um, then you start to understand that you can surrender. I worked with a, a man, he was 38 years old, had four children under the age of 11. He called me up one day. He was facing terminal cancer months from his final day. And he said, will you meet me at the gas station? He had a big um, 150 pickup truck. And I said, yes, I will. So I drove down to the gas station. He said, I want you to get in my car for a minute. And he handed me a CD. And in that CD, it was entitled, Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> and so we he put it in the player and we listened and um, when it was finished, we both looked at each other and we started to laugh and we laughed and we laughed and then all of a sudden we cried and we cried. And I knew what he was saying to me. He looked at me and he said, Robin, I'm ready to go. Mm. What a precious moment. Yes. It was a gift that I knew after walking with him for three years, he had finally totally surrendered. surrendered and like he, Jesus like uh, Jesus, uh -huh. and he knew that he, everything was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful time with the Lord. Yeah. Precious time. He might have actually got a sight of heaven. Yes. He might yes. have during that time. What God gave him such peace knowing mm -hmm. that he, God would take care of his family. Yes. God would take care of his children. Mm -hmm. yes. God cares about them more than we, you and I can, mm -hmm. possibly, mm -hmm. yeah. because he's perfect love. Yeah. And I think that understanding God's character and his nature that he does what's best for us. He does what our, for our good and his glory. Mm -hmm. That's what we're told in Romans mm -hmm. 8, 28. And when we understand that surrender comes, mm -hmm. when we totally turn and trust in God's goodness in our mm -hmm. lives. And know that he has a purpose. Yes. Yeah, he has purposes that go back before we were ever born uh, yes. for our lives. And he has pur he allows tribulation. He allows tragedies. He allows losses. He allows 
pain. He allows, and, and, peop, and, and you talk about the whys in your book. When we ask, why God are you allowing this? Why are you? But we sometimes will never know. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but somebody, uh, he, one thing we do know, he promises that uh, good's going to come out of it. And I've always counseled people, look, you're here, you're going through this, and you haven't been able to change it, drain it dry. Yeah. God's got something in it for you, so drain it dry. Don't, don't go through all of this and get nothing from it. Yes. He says, all things work together for good. our good to those who are called according to his purpose. So yes. uh, we, we, we want our viewers to get a handle on that, that we can ask, it's okay to ask why. Yes. God's, God's yes. not going to condemn us and come down, roaring down on us uh, if we ask why or if we wonder what it's all about. It might be some things in our own life we need to search out and allow the Holy Spirit to show us that we need to learn and see. It might have to do with others. Uh, it might have to do, and it will always have to do with His overall plan. Absolutely. Uh, overall plan. And even in Hebrews, it says that Jesus learned obedience yes, from what he suffered. he suffered. he <laughs> suffered. And, and that's a heart that's the son of God <laughs> who in initially agreed, agreed with the Father that he would come and do yes, what he did. Yes, and you're right. I think we find um, our greatest treasures in our greatest greatest places of pain. So sometimes we don't understand what God is doing, but what we do know is in the midst of trials and tribulations, you and I are refined so that we can better shine forth. I love that word. You use it <laughs> yes. a lot in your book. I yes. like it. I like so that it. we can shine the forth Jesus, yes. uh -huh. the, Jesus, the hope of glory in us yes. is Jesus Christ. Yes. And so we go through those trials and tribulations, but we come out looking more like Jesus for each and every trial we well, go that through. Is th that's his purpose. That's his purpose. And that's what we ought to get hold of and find that treasure and make sure that's true. A lot's being said today uh, and written today about leaving a legacy. And uh, so out of this trial and tribulation that we're going through can help leave that, how we handle it, uh, can leave a legacy for our children and our even our neighbors, our uh, the, the other our friends that we go to church with, and so on and so forth. That can be said. Uh, you know, uh, I know I've had to attend several funerals lately, and a lot being said about the person's life and so on and so forth. Their legacy. Yes, ma'am. Our legacy is what we pass forward to our children and grandchildren and the people that love us, the people that surround us. Our spiritual legacy is vital. And I do believe that when we choose to live like Jesus teaches us how to live in Scripture, we will pass a beautiful legacy, legacy to our children. For our children, and, and by the way, grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, I have seven grandchildren, oh. and I have some great grandchildren coming along. They're quite young, though. Uh, but in uh, in thinking about. All of this, Robin, it takes faith. Yes. It takes faith. Uh, faith gives us the victory in any circumstance. Talk about it a little bit. Well, I know when I went through my trial, uh, Dr. Frieda, I grabbed every healing scripture I could get. I wrote it down. I read it out loud. I quoted it. I, I even put it on tape in case I couldn't speak it out. And I decided in my heart, God, I'm going to believe your word. Yes. I'm going to believe it. And I went back to Mayo and they gave me a beautiful dismissal Come back if you ever need us again. Oh, how wonderful, <laughs> how wonderful. To God be the glory. Yes, ma'am. To God be the glory. He magnified himself, yes. didn't he? And I am often mention that in prayer, that what I'm asking for will magnify him yes. and not 
me, yes. so, uh, so to speak. So, uh, but anyway, we're, uh, I've got to share from a couple of viewers uh, before we go off, and I think we're pushing uh, time. And I do have uh, a prayer request that reads, Dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for me. I am going through a hard situation right now. Please pray that I take one day at a time and continue to look forward to the Lord and trust in Him alone. A wonderful prayer request. She's right on target. And we've taken this prayer request to God as we do all prayer requests that come in during our Monday morning worship service here at our uh, media church worship service on Monday morning. And I and then I pray later that uh, for these people uh, that God has already or is intervening with them and they're finding these treasures that uh, Robin has um, written about. And then I have a, a word of encouragement from a viewer. Dear Dr. Frieda, thank you so much for your wonderful talk on contentment and appreciation. You are so knowledgeable. Thank you for that. It go, God, to God be the glory. May God bless you and yours. Thank you for your wonderful program and thank you for those uh, encouraging words. And uh, we invite you to send in your prayer requests and I'm always delighted to receive uh, encouragement from my viewers. And I also encourage you to ask God what he would have you to do about helping us financially. We would greatly appreciate it. And then I say, make sure you join us again next week on Time for Hope. Thank you for watching Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. We offer a free fact sheet with more information on today's topic. Call or write us to get your copy today. The resource we are offering this week is available for a donation of at least $16 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800 669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support the Time for Hope ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send a gift to Time for Hope, you are joining in the ministry to which God has called us. It will also enable us to inform and inspire viewers to become students of God's Word and grow closer to Him, and in turn, minister more effectively to others as God gives them opportunity. Look for Dr. Frieda's Scriptural Devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. And to see this program again online, visit our website or search for the Time for Hope TV ministry on YouTube, iTunes, Roku, or Facebook. And to see booklets Dr. Frieda has written on such topics as grief and loss, marriage, and prayer, call us or visit our website, timeforhope.org. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.